Yo, what's up guys? I'm gonna do my Blight League thoughts, expansion, theory, whatever you want to call it. So without further ado, before we get started, this just dropped the day after. So it's been about a day since the release here. Uh, at work today I sat down and watched a lot of streamers and their reactions. So I do have a little like background of the League so far going into this reaction. So it's not my first time um, looking at the trailer or anything. So this is really cool. So eight cards will get you a pure Cheula Breachstone. These are really good for just experience, loot. I mean, I mean these cards are gonna definitely keep maybe a good maybe static price for these. Maybe try to lower the price of the pure Cheula. And it's gonna be hard to get splinters now. So I'm all for this. It's gonna be a great card. So let's go check out the trailer for Blight. You guys have probably seen it quite a bit too, but the Blight, here's my thoughts. A creeping black fungus that feeds on the will of its hosts. Pulsating with toxic blood, too dangerous Ooh. to touch. Too dangerous Honestly, that to looks ignore. great. We must drain the eye core of this dark infection. It's mindless husks will protect. Here they come. So I Fight them off. Weapons. Which conjure flames, the air, move the earth. Cool, cool, so different. Looks easy to do on PC, so, hard to do on console. I need your might. And to the mighty go the spoils. Sweet, like all those treasure piles down here. Some are bigger than others, maybe that's a failed one, maybe it's just a lesser loot. Okay, so when you click it, it takes it away. So it means so that way you don't leave any behind. So like in monolith clearing, sometimes you would maybe if you didn't have your map open or something, you would run past one or leave one unpopped. The source of this blight is out there. It's black tendrils reaching for us. Reaching. We will seek it out. And the more the better. The more you get, the more loot. So try and defend every lane. Try and expand them out. Does look good for party play, but I think you could do it with fast movement speed characters. I'm also gonna give my build thoughts for starter builds. The blight is here. Yeah, it is. Jeez, it's everywhere. Are the cure. Okay, so my main concern for this league is how long do these take? Because if you could run another map or progress farther along, especially early on, it might not be worth expanding these things out for and pursuing them. But if the rewards are just as good as running another map and it takes just as long and it's fun and interactive, why not? I mean, it's just, if you like doing maps, you might not do these. I don't know. I like the oils. I think those things are awesome. So let's go and see what Chris has to say. In the Blight League, Sister Cassia is trying to stop the spread of the mind-controlling Blight by destroying fungal growths. When attacked, the Blight commands infected monsters to defend it. The monsters mindlessly follow the Blight's tendrils, only attacking foes directly in their path. Looks like they hit hard if you are right in front of them, but it does slow them down. But they are going to chunk you if you're in the lanes. ...that are unusually tough, so you'll need to build defensive towers to exploit each monster's specific weaknesses. For each tendril lane you defend, a chest will appear with your rewards. These rewards can include oils, which Sister Cassia can combine together to enchant so... So this is also interesting, like he gets quick step and it doesn't look like he's very far along in the leveling process. So if you could make this at like level 10, I mean that is an advantage. So it looks like you can do this content early on. He is pretty well geared, so. Those items. Blighted maps contain larger pockets of infection Cleanse these for rewards, including unique items which can be enchanted with notable passive skills. 
And now the enchantments begin. So there's going to be a lot more of this probably. Um, this is only the start, tip of the iceberg. The interface looks really cool on these icons. Really like it. The Vexel Blight, we also have a focus on giving you more control over when you run side content. Master missions now stack for later if you don't run them immediately. This expansion also contains significant revamps to the saboteur. So before he goes into the revamps, um, that is huge. If you play standard, or even if you don't really play standard, I would suggest filling out your atlas. Just run like one map to get your atlas back on standard, and then start playing League. Because then you can start gaining your master missions on standard, and just pile them up. Rack them in, keep them coming. And then you can also do that on League, so you can bounce back and forth. This might actually bring more people to Standard, knowing that they can just make 10 temples or a dozen temples or delve for days because they don't play Standard, but then when they come back and see 80 red Nikos they can make, I mean, that's amazing. This is going to make Scarabs kind of lower in price. Just like the need for master missions might go down, especially uh, for players that are casual based like myself that are full time. We just don't have time to run every mission. About halfway through the league, I only have time Monday through Friday to really just grab Nico and do some delving and then try and progress or get something. I, I just don't have time to just do Alva missions, but now I can on the weekends. I can. Just bang them all out real quick. Bang, 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 bang. Give me them temples. Give me that delve. Give me them beasts. I mean, it's great. And now it's all shared and stuff. I mean, it's, it's just great. It just is a load off. It's just like a sigh of relief. We don't have to do that shit every day. Assassin and Necromancer ascendancy classes, as well as an additional bar of skill bindings. Again, probably the second biggest thing, so the master rework where indefinitely you can just run masters and then the skill bar. Those are the two things that I'm really hyped for. Check out Path of Exile Blight on September 6th. Looks like the skill bar might be toggle, so we might have a whole nother bottom bar that we can toggle. Which would be great for auras or any of that. Heralds. All right, so let's go into the news post, and let's just let's check it out. So it looks like her name is something. We'll figure that out eventually, but Cassia, that's right, Sister Cassia. So it looks like there's portals that monsters come out and they go try and damage the core in the center. So while you're siphoning the stuff, you're going to have to build towers and then you're going to have to fight. And then at the end, the chests are probably along the tentacles or at the end of the tentacle where the portal used to be. So the more of these you can hold off and fight, the better. So it looks like you can get enchantments that help your towers on your rings. Um, it's just going to maybe be a good combo. It's not necessarily, I'm not sure, this is all theoretical, but the chill would be great to slow monsters. I'm not sure. It says the weaknesses, so maybe some of these you're going to have to find certain ones to bring them down. Especially on hard rolled maps or whatever, so... And then there's these, it looks like there's just a ton of poor, like maybe it's throughout the whole map or it just looks insane, so this will be great. Probably where you can get maybe a bunch of oils and uniques and stuff, so. And then these where you can enchant your amulets, that's huge. Like you can get hexproof, so you can get an additional curse, and then if you corrupt and get an additional curse. I mean, you could have plus two curses. I'm not, maybe, that's what I'm thinking. And then also pay attention to these colors and maybe that is what gives you Golem's blood. Maybe not, but just looking right here, it looks like maybe it's showing you what you'll get by putting the oils in. So maybe this is what it would show you when you're putting them in. It'll show you, hey, you get that. 
possibly. And you can also get passes on some uniques now, which are pretty cool. Huge, like I said, for casual players that just don't have time. Now on the weekends, I can just build temples, build beast, Nico it out. Um, I think Zane is on there too, hopefully. That'd be nice. It's just like a bunch of free maps. Uh, Necromancer is getting reworked. So the two build types I would recommend to League Start. Necro is going to be one because it is so easy to get started. And when you're messing with these interfaces, like the towers, and deciding what you want to do early on, um, having an army fighting while you're deciding is better because you don't want to have to be doing the damage early on when you're trying to figure it out yourself. Monsters are coming at you. You have to do the damage. You can't even get the temple or the, the tower started. So Necro is going to be good because they'll stay out and fight for you. And another one would be Totems because Totems are technically damage towers already. So Totem builds starting out like Arc Totem or just any kind of Totem. Bladefall Totems with the new daggers and stuff. So those are my two. Necro and Totems. Mines, that looks really cool. Um, Assassin, yeah, that's neat. Uh, they have really good top end damage. Poison is really good and strong for like longer boss fights or chunkier monsters. So It's also a dot damage, so you can apply it and then maybe build some towers while they're still dying off. So poison's technically not too bad. Mines, I mean, if those critters can detonate them, so maybe you can throw them out, build a tower while your critters are detonating for you. That's another good type. Anything where you don't have to do the damage. Um, so kind of sorry, Melee. So like I said, Bladefall, EK on this dagger. So Polish, these, this is going to be my theory. Um, I don't know if these are static, the War Hordes. But if they are, that's great. Polished, you get extra currency, I think, is what the War Hordes were. But um, I'm thinking if they are static and they stay, the Gilded would probably be... And I'm thinking, like, the Rusted would probably be, like, an Incubator. But I'm thinking maybe, like, the Gilded one would be a General. So the Generals will always spawn on gilded so you'll you'll just guarantee a general to spawn which would really increase the value of the gilded over getting a uh, incubator and getting a war horde that's my theory it could be completely wrong these could change every one who knows probably not though because they stack into the tabs so now that i'm thinking about it they probably will be static so these will always be war horde but it's subject to change you never know Faded Unique cards, awesome. Bone Helmet, great for, a, yet again, doing Necro stuff this league. That's interesting. I don't want to put too much thought into that. Another Minion set of gloves. So many Minion Uniques, Necro Uniques. It's going to be really overpowered, That's um, what I'm thinking. And the Supporter Packs. So that's pretty much it, guys. I'm going to leave you all with that. Tell me what you guys think. My only concern is just how long are these going to take, and is it something after a few weeks I still want to do, or is it something that I just want to skip, because I'm an old school player, I've been playing for quite some time, since Torment League, so for quite a few years, and leagues that make you do something like every time and they're like really thought out and they're just they're in the map so it's like you want to just finish the map like you're getting teased in the map like when you pop a breach for example and it, oh, it starts to expand it's just like can i just go like can i just leave like i don't want to have to like wait 30 40 seconds and then have to pick stuff up and then it's like i just kind of want to just fly through so i guess they're trying to slow people down but if the rewards are good it's worth a shot Again, I think low-level farming will be the meta 
I, I just think like if you can just fully do these really fast and like stomp them like to the point where your towers are just strong enough to kill shit or you are then low level farming is going to thrive unless like really expensive oils drop off the red ones then it would be worth it or they drop more or just like yeah higher tiers so but again if you're flying through low level ones you're going to be getting more oils to trade in three for one so all right guys i'm going to leave you all with that easy company out have a good day. Leave your comments below. Please follow and subscribe, and I'll be trying to put out as much content as I can.